In this video, we will go over the web interface on an FM Plus. The UI is very similar on a single channel Wavecast unit with the exception of the FM functions. The front panel on a Wavecast server makes a few functions easy to access for quick setup, such as the audio source and audio input gain level. However, for more advanced functions, the web UI must be used. The web UI uses a normal internet browser to display the pages and allow configuration. From the factory, the unit ships in DHCP mode, so it will automatically pull an IP address from the network and display this address on the front display. Using a PC connected to the network, open a browser such as Chrome and use this IP address to get to the web interface. The login for the unit is admin and admin, all lowercase. You'll notice that there are several tabs here. Notice also the status showing the FM broadcast is active as well as the streaming output. Main Settings tab. FM radio gives us the option of turning the FM broadcast on or off. For example, you may want to turn it off if you will only be using the streaming part of the unit. Output. This sets the broadcast power. The lower the setting, the lower the range. This is used when multiple units may be in an area and channels need to be repeated. By lowering this range, multiple transmitters can be used in a smaller area. Low has the range of about 300 feet, medium has a range of up to 500 feet, and full has a range of up to 1,000 feet. FM timeout does the same thing as the last setting, except it monitors incoming audio. When the incoming audio is not present, a timer begins and the RF output will be shut off. When audio returns, the unit will begin broadcasting again. Channel. This selects the channel or frequency you want the unit to broadcast on. Although there are 17 channels to choose from, there will be multiple FM transmitters in the same area. Each transmitter will need to be set up on a different channel, and this needs to be 1 through 8. Channels 9 through 17 will begin to interfere with channels 1 through 8, which is why 9 through 17 would not be used with multiple transmitters. Audio input gain. Normally this level should be set at zero. The incoming audio level should always be adjusted at the source, such as a DSP, until the level bounces around zero dB on the VU meter. The audio input gain adjustment is normally only used if a microphone is plugged into the audio input and it's used to apply makeup gain. Typically, however, this is recommended as a last resort as it usually brings noise along with it. So do not use this gain to make up a low level coming from an external source. Audio input source. Normally this will be set to analog line in. Note there is also a 400 Hz test tone that can be used to verify the unit is broadcasting. If the tone can be heard in receivers but the audio input is not, the problem is the audio input. Audio level can be verified by looking at the front view meter when audio is sent to the unit. Audio presets. These are pre-configured settings as a quick way to optimize the sound. Voice applies a high pass filter at 125 Hertz and a low pass filter at 6.3 Hertz and no compression and this is optimized for speech. Music applies a high pass filter at 31 Hertz, a low pass filter at 16 kilohertz and no compression. Hearing assist compresses the audio at two to one, taming the peaks between loud or soft voices. Custom allows experienced users to set the filters and compression to their needs. Options tab. Channel, server, description, and DHCP host name. This is what the user will see in the app as the channel they can select to listen to. For IT folks, this also names the devices it will be seen in the router or network management console. Front panel, button lock, and screen lock. This locks out the front panel so no one can make changes from the front panel. When the front panel is locked, changes can still be made through the web UI. Display timeout. This is a power saving feature. The display will go dark after the chosen time expires. Network settings tab, IP address mode, DHCP or static. The unit ships in DHCP mode for ease of connecting and getting into this web UI for initial configuration. However, many times it is desired to have the unit at a static IP address. This is where that gets set. Also note, the MAC address is displayed here too. TTL. This stands for time to live. This sets how many switch hops are allowed before a wavecast packet expires. Typically it's advised to keep the physical switch hops to a minimum if possible, so this number can be set as low as possible. More switch hops equals more latency. Advanced options, secure mode. 
This is a security feature that requires the user to enter a pin code for channel access. When the radio button for enabled is clicked, a window opens up where the pin code can be entered. This pin code will now be required in the app for the user to connect to this channel. Network Compensation Buffer. The Wavecast unit has a variable buffer. This can be used if there are issues with latency or audio dropouts. Less buffering equals lower latency, but more dropouts. More buffering equals more latency, but less dropouts. This is the trade-off. The idea is we want to hit the sweet spot between as few dropouts as possible with the lowest latency possible. The default value the unit ships with is three. Audio transmission mode. Use unicast for 45 users or less. Use multicast for more than 45 users. Note, network hardware must support multicast. Network off will shut off streaming, similar to the way we shut off FM broadcast in the other option window. You can shut off network streaming if only FM broadcast will be used. Max servers on subnet. The maximum number of devices allowed on the network can be adjusted here. This may be necessary if you have a mix of unicast and multicast devices. This setting must, must match on all multicast devices on the same network or all the devices will throw an error and be unable to stream. If unicast devices are included on the network, the max servers on subnet setting on multicast devices must be set to four. If only multicast devices are included, the maximum can be set to four or eight, as long as max servers on subnet settings is the same on all devices. If settings are mismatched, the server will be unable to stream audio and will throw an incompatible server error. Multicast address. In some cases, a network may need to have a designated static multicast address. By default, the unit uses DHCP to pull a multicast address and it will show the IP address it's currently using. If a custom multicast address is used, it may be done here. Upload image tab. This is where we can upload a custom image that will be shown to identify a channel in the app. This image will appear to the left of the channel name on the channel bar. Admin tab change password. Here's where you can change the administrator username and password to access the unit through the web interface. It's strongly recommended to write this down as only a file system reset will be able to restore this to the default. Additional functions. The reboot button will restart the unit. You can also restore configuration settings to factory defaults. But note, this will not change the IP address. You can still remotely log in to the unit using the same IP address after this reset. You can also download an error log for troubleshooting purposes. System update. Here is where you can update the firmware in the unit. The current version is displayed. You can watch our video tutorial on the firmware upgrade process linked in the episode details below. We'd like to thank you again for choosing Williams AV as your listening solution. If you have any questions, please visit our website to submit a support form or email us at techservices at williamsav.com.